as heard on the Thirsty Mage RPG podcast. Uh, yeah, so this week's last call is inspired by the Eves and uh, my recent playthrough of uh, Cold Steel 4. And uh, the topic this week is uh, whether or not that is Nihon Falcom, the most underappreciated developer in the West. Uh, I mean, there's, there's, there's plenty of unappreciated developers around, that's for certain. But I just feel like uh, having played these games and having gone through the, the full game of Cold Steel 4 and in just recently playing Cold Steel 3 because I uh, played the Switch version a few just a few months ago. Uh, these games really are on the same level as something that you would get from Atlas or Square. And w- we know how much admiration they get, especially in the West. And uh, I'm sure there's a bit of a history behind that. Like the, the, the games have been out in the West for a very long time. Like when you think of Square, obviously, like started on the NES. Uh, same with Atlas. Like the, the, they have a uh, maybe a bigger history in the West, I suppose. But I just feel like at this point... They they've had so many good titles come out, uh, with like Eve's Aid and and the the Cold Steel series, and then uh, even before that, like the the Trails in the Sky. Uh, there's just so much that's so great, and, and I oh, I'm to the point where I'm just not understanding why they're they're not put on that same level, why they're yeah, not getting I mean, the same amount of love that that, that these other know. developers are getting. It's they I need to get into the the the. Trails of Cold Steel. Um, get in and never get out. Boat. I feel it'll, you it'll guys have talked life, it up so, so much. Uh, yeah, that, it's one of those games I, I got to get in there. But I wonder if it is partly right. Um, I, f- I mean, obviously Square has always been huge, even when there was big delays. I mean, even Dragon Quest, um, you know, the, the most re- recent Dragon Quest, obviously, you know, took a while to get over here. Um, but... Because I'm looking at even like Cold Steel 4 came out in 2018, you know what I mean, originally, and it's just coming over now. Now, I'm trying to think, or let me check real quick. Um, What's the gap? Yeah, right. So, yeah, so PS4, it's coming out. All right, same time, right. All right, so, yeah, I I was making sure it wasn't released already. He's he's uh, reviewing it on PS4. That's right. You're actually doing this for the PS4, right? Uh, yeah, the PS4 is just coming right. out, and the I, I, Switch version of Cold Steel 4 mm-hmm. will come out. I believe it's coming in March. Next. Oh. Yeah. Gotcha. Because uh, I wonder if, like, not being, you know, having the resources to get a, you know, worldwide launch, you know, it, it comes out in Japan, it gets hyped up, then sort of dies down a little bit, then comes out in the States, you know, without the same, you know, sort of gusto. You know, I wonder if that sort of plays a part into some of these games sort of falling behind um as far as popularity goes but like i said i i'm really interested to see how nine uh for, at least in, in terms of ease to, uh how nine does when it gets here um you know if if it sells really well in comparison to previous titles or you know because maybe it is sort of the beginning of it getting you know more so acclaim my, and, and more recognition uh, my maybe not philosophy but my my guess as to why uh, maybe the developer isn't as appreciated is you think about the the lag time between when games are releasing and when uh, the localization or when they when they come over uh, to uh, to North America and Europe uh, or leave Japan I guess um, that if it's multiple years where that's happening it's possible that the games feel dated by the time that they come over or that a new console comes out and people have already moved on to that um, I think the fact that it really Neon Falcon was developing games exclusively for for PC, but not just PC. I think they're they're Japanese PCs that probably weren't even available over here, right? So you're thinking yeah. about, you know, late 80s, mid even up to the mid 90s, there weren't games coming to Windows until it looks like 97. Um and so that's a long time. So that's missing out on the NES, the Super NES, even the N64 had come out by that time, right? So you're you're missing you're missing and and I I I think they did have mm-hmm. a couple games on Super Famicom. Uh, and maybe uh, a version of the Turbo Graphic 16, but by that time, there's just so much. So, like Square Enix, Square and Enix, I suppose, separately have already made such inroads in the you know RPG fans' life. You know, like there's so many games in those series that have already come out. All the Dragon Quest games, the Final Fantasy games. Uh, by this time, to to bring over like uh, the E series or any of the Trails games or the Legend of Heroes games, I suppose. Um, it, yeah, it just feels like it's very hard for them to to get in at that time. There's also the fact that 
they're they're really wanting to publish and i think do a lot of the translation work in house like they're they're not farming out their games to be done elsewhere and they never had to my knowledge they never had a uh, a branch in the u.s right they like square enix had uh, a, a branch of its company in north america i think in yeah. a, i think enix did as well um other camp other companies followed suit and so that would make translating these games faster and easier so it's just it's just a company that that maybe they didn't have um illusions of grandeur like maybe they didn't want to be this huge mega company competing with the likes of squaresoft and enix right that they they're happy just kind of like you know, making a making profit on every game, you know, selling to like a hardcore dedicated audience. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that, right? Like you don't you don't need to be, you know, tearing the doors off the or telling the roof off the house every time you sell a game. Like you can you can just be be happy like with with a consistent product that is good, that has a dedicated fan base. I I, I respect that, you know, like it's it's not trying to set records with every new game that you release, but instead stay true to specific formulas and um yeah just to kind of keeping keeping the people that support you happy um I, it's definitely underappreciated because we just haven't gotten a ton of their games and we've gotten them too sporadically like you think about this separation between the cold steel games not just in terms of years apart but also on platforms right uh i've, I've played uh cold steel one on vita I have a PlayStation 3 copy of Cold Steel 2. I've reviewed the game. I've reviewed the third game on Switch. The fourth game is coming to PS4 in a week. Like, it's just too spread out, you know? Like, I want to play I want to play two or three games on, maybe on the same console mm-hmm. or at least on the same, you know, on Nintendo platforms uh, or all on Sony platforms or something like that. And it's just harder to do that with Neon Falcon games. I suppose... If if you're a dedicated uh, PC player and you're pl- you like playing JRPGs on PC, you're probably well served by Neon Falcom and and whoever's publishing their games. But I I I can't imagine sitting down for the length of some of these games at a PC and you know 30, 40, 50 hours RPGs. Uh, I'm just not interested in that at all. Like I, I want I want it to be portable. I want it to be on a, on a larger screen. Whatever. Like I, I want it to be accessible to me. And so. Yeah, I think there's a lot of reasons why it's it's not as appreciated, but I hope that's changing. Like, I, I hope that's changing with you know this, the at least critical success of Cool Steel Three. I think it did, I think it, the Metacritic scores are quite good. <laughs> at least I know that David and I uh, certainly thought so. Um, and 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 it sounds like Cool Steel Four is going to be much <laughs> more the same. So uh, maybe maybe this is the time when a lot of Neon Falcon games are coming to modern platforms uh and in and in a fairly quick uh, succession right like maybe this is their chance to gain some notoriety and maybe that'll even propel them to or convince them to uh, uh find a way to get some of their older titles on on uh, on switch for example yeah i definitely think this could be a payday for nis america because it it really is like between the eaves and the the trails series the franchise or the legend of heroes uh i just think there's a ton of terrific games that when people find them or discover them they could really kick off yeah i think like you said all the reasons that you guys mentioned are are all contributing towards why we don't know them as well in the west um i I think like you kind of had it dead on with i I just don't feel like nihon falcom has the the will or the um, desire to really uh, market themselves outside of japan like you said i think they Mm -hmm. they're kind of a pc developer um they're they're more than happy to make pc games for the japanese fan base and uh just kind of rely on other companies to kind of piggyback or or benefit from the <laughs> the terrific games uh, in this case uh, nis america is now the one uh, benefiting from it mm-hmm. um i guess the, the the thing for me especially um having just played about i don't know 60 70 hours of cold steel 4 and um probably could potentially be my game of the year for 2020 it's just, it wasn't that long ago that we had the debate between, like, action-based RPGs and turn-based RPGs when uh, Final Fantasy VII Remake came out. And everyone kind of on the the, the bandwagon of, like, oh, turn-based RPGs are, are, you know, they're great. And then when you think of, like, all the, um, everyone kind of jump loving, maybe not everyone on this podcast, but everyone else loving Octopath Traveler for 
going back to the to the, to the turn based style and um <laughs> like for me i i just really think that the cold steel series uh three and four at least uh is probably the best turn based modern game like uh, I've always really held Persona 5 uh, in high regards, and especially Ro- uh, Royal having come out this year. But even then, like I just think that the, the turn-based combat in Cold Steel 4 uh, just just overshadows it just a little bit. It's just that mm. much better. There's just more complexity, uh, more strategy. And I think uh, there, there might be a lot of turn-based RPG fans who haven't gotten into this series yet that are going to have their minds blown when, when one day they pick up one of these games and realize, oh man, like this, these are terrific games. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I can't really add anything to that. I think Cold Steel games are great. I think the Ease games that, that have come over so far are great. I still want to go back and play other ones, but I'm holding out hope for Switch. And um, yeah. yeah, I mean, there's, there's, there's tons of, I, I think, you know, RPGs, uh, I think there's just so many of them that uh, it's the kind of game that, will always the kind of maybe it's a genre that'll always be part of your backlog or there's just gonna be so many that you never get to and um if they can if if some of these games can find their way to switch like i i'll make i'll be able to make time for them (laughs) like i this 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 is this is what the episode has devolved into this this me pleading with somebody to keep localizing (laughs) games for 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 switch you know because i because i won't i won't be able to play them otherwise and um yeah it it really is Nihon Falcom that has this huge stable of titles that I want to go back to because the ones that they have brought over I think have been spectacular and if I were making you know I think at some point next year I'd love to do like a top 10 RPGs or like a top hell if we want to get nuts like do a top 100 RPGs podcast or something like that or a series of podcasts I don't know um but that that would be that it would be hellacious Good but land. i think it would also be uh, a place where we could really insert so many of these games near near the top of the list that maybe people haven't played yet so how about yeah, uh, march madness uh what is it top the there bracket we go. yeah yeah that's that's Ooh, what we're gonna do the bracket yeah and we'll we'll come up with the the definitive top rpg and that no one will be happy with <laughs> yes that's right <laughs> I was gonna say, yeah, that that won't that won't uh, yield any uh, arguments and ending. We'll have fun doing it though, and that's what counts. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Octopath Traveler will okay. not be in okay. the top so, sixty-four. God dang it! it Casey's sucks. already off that podcast. <laughs> uh, j- just because we've got we've already had uh, our uh, weekly quota of Octopath mentions met. Uh, I did want to I did want to say just before we wrap up that there has been some Octopath news that came out today that I saw. Um, there, there's a phone, there's a phone game. I don't know if it's. <laughs> you lost me at phone game. <laughs> <laughs> I should have, I should have started with the phone that's game. That's the end of the show, there, guys. There, there is a phone, you. there's a phone game coming. I, I don't know if it's coming to the West, but there is a phone <laughs> game coming uh, of Octopath. Uh, with, a, I think that's like episodic story content and episodic characters or something like that, whatever. Uh, they all, but in, in the same breath or the same interview where they mentioned, uh, the mobile game is still being worked on. Uh, the, a sequel is, I suppose in the cards, or they they do mention another console Octopath game or another a full fledged Octopath game. So uh, for those still holding out for hope, like uh, for that game, like I am, uh, we did get another mention of it today. Uh, and of course, uh, the, the whoever they were interviewing at Square also said, uh, you know, look forward to Brave the Default too. Uh, some my guess still sometime in twenty. I'm still waiting for Diablo. More. Oh, good luck, uh, dude. Like who who knows? <laughs> yeah. <Speaking> of <laughs> 